Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and today I'm actually going to be doing a tag video. I've never done a tag video before, but I actually really liked this one. This is my makeup collection tag. This was started by Georgia Harris. I will link her original video down below because I think it's a really interesting video and I've seen a couple other people do these and I really, really liked it and so I thought I would do one too. So I did go ahead and print out all of the questions. I'll also have those down below as well. But without further ado, let's get into the different prompts for this tag. So the first question is, how long have you been collecting makeup? And that's kind of an interesting question because I never really set out to collect makeup. And I don't even know kind of what started it, other than the fact that I have a hard time letting go of things. So I think that it really sort of started when I was in high school and college. I did a lot of theater. I loved theater. And so I held on to all of my theater makeup because you never knew when you were going to need it. And I also held on to kind of funky makeup that I would come across because again for stage you need a more exaggerated look and so brighter colors and I felt like oh this color that's on sale this eyeshadow that's this intense neon blue that could have use sometime and so I would buy those or I would get tired of something and so I would put it to the side and buy something else but that thing was still good and I didn't want to get rid of it and that is kind of how I lived my life up until the last few years. Now up until a few years ago I really only wore eye makeup and lip color. I didn't wear really anything on my complexion. I was very very fortunate. I've got decently good skin and I didn't really know how to do it outside of like heavy cake stage makeup so I just didn't. Um, when I turned 30 I really noticed a shift in my skin. I've always had a natural redness to my to my face um, and it's kind of progressed to almost borderline rosacea. If you've seen any of my videos where I start out with a blank face, you've probably seen some of it. It's, with the skincare, I, it's died down just a little bit, but I still have a lot of complexion correcting to do. And that's when I really started getting into more face makeup. And then within the past, I don't know, I would say four years is when I started getting into buying more makeup. New and more interesting things were coming out. I was in a point in my life where I could afford to treat myself a little bit. And I think that's where it really sort of came from. Because when I was in college, definitely in most of my 20s, guys, I was hella broke. All the time, I was hella broke paying for school and, and other bills and things like that. I just didn't have any money and it was it was quite an expense for me to just go buy my Max Factor mascara. And side note, dang I wish Max Factor was still around here in the States because that was my jam. I loved it. So once I got to a point where financially if I wanted to go out and buy a high-end eyeshadow palette, I could. And I think I've embraced it a little too much because <laughs> my collection, if you've seen my declutter videos, is extensive. I'm actually a little concerned that it has moved from a collection to all in all hoarding. So yeah, I never really set out to be a makeup collector. It's just where I've kind of ended up and I do enjoy it. I love makeup. I love looking at makeup and shopping for makeup and buying makeup and using makeup. I just it makes me happy. So uh, Marie Kondo would not be happy if she saw my makeup collection, but the vast majority of it does bring me joy and that's why it's still around. So the next question is, what kind of collection do you have? Minimal, utilitarian, aesthetic, historical, etc. Um, I think the only word right now that can describe my makeup collection is excessive. As I just said in my previous question, I just, I have a lot. And I enjoy it, but it is starting to get to the point where it's a little bit overwhelming. I have so many things that I enjoy that I'm not using through anything. I don't have that, for instance, eyeshadow quad that I just use to death and then go out and replace. I have tons and tons of eyeshadow palettes that I genuinely like, but rotating through them, I could use a different eyeshadow palette every single day 
and maybe use them all once. And that's, that's concerning. <laughs> so I would say at this point, my makeup collection is excessive and I am trying to address it, but it's hard. So the next question, are you a completionist? And I believe that that means when it comes to like a makeup collection, for instance, a really good example would be the ColourPop Villains collection that just came out. You know, do I need to have the whole thing just because you want to complete the collection? And I would say no. I generally, generally, that's not a word, Generally, don't go out and buy the entire collection unless the entire collection really speaks to me. Or if a good like 90% of it does and it's less expensive to buy the whole thing like with the ColourPop bundles. But overall, no, I, I really wouldn't call myself a completionist. I'm also not somebody that, for instance, like the chocolate bar palettes, I have a, a fair number of them, but I'm not gonna go out and buy the ones that don't speak to me just so that I have a full set. So. I don't, I don't think I would call myself a completionist, no. So question number four, how do you store slash organize your collection? Guys, I am a hot mess. I, I have a series of mismatched drawers. I have boxes and inserts and I don't do a room tour right now because it is shameful the amount of makeup that I have and I don't have a good way of organizing it at the moment so it's it's a mess normally in my other videos you do see a couple of the drawers but I have other drawers scattered throughout this room as well as just other places I need to find a better organizational method to be quite honest with you and that's why I started decluttering around the beginning of the year or attempting to declutter at the beginning of the year was so that I could implement a better organizational strategy. But that time has not come. Hopefully I'll get there by the end of the year. But at the moment, it's a disaster. That is what, that is the word that describes my organizational. <laughs> uh, yeah, so on to the next. What is your favorite thing about your collection? Honestly, that I get that I get to go shopping in my home every single day. Like I know that that sounds dumb, but no matter what kind of mood I'm in, I have something that can reflect that. And I really, really love that. I love that I can go into my eyeshadow drawer and find so many things that I really, really like that, you know, almost no matter what kind of mood I'm in for my lip, I have something for that. I really love the morning time. So typically I wake up around six and I'm the first person up in my house, which is so nice. I have usually close to an hour of just alone time where I sit in my office and I put on my makeup and it just, it makes me happy. I know that that sounds weird, but it does. Putting on makeup, I just, I find it very relaxing and very inspiring. And that is the thing that I love most about my collection. All right, on to question number six. What is your least favorite thing about or something that you could do to improve your collection? The volume, the volume. So as much as I love that I can go into, for instance, one of my many lip drawers to find something that will suit the mood that I'm in, it's also overwhelming, right? Because I've got so many to choose from. And that is where I need a better organization on why I started trying to declutter a little bit I gravitate towards some of the same things oftentimes, and I, I don't think I'm alone in that. When it comes to my lip color, for instance, I have dozens, probably, of a very similar shade repeated throughout my collection. And so that's where I get to the point where I start to feel a little bit overwhelmed because I look at those drawers that are crammed full of lip products, and it's exhausting thinking about trying to go through that. There's a reason that you haven't seen the declutter of my lip products and it's because I feel very overwhelmed by it and I, I'm putting it off. It needs to be done, but I'm putting it off. So I think that's my least favorite thing about my collection is that it's, it's getting to the point where I do feel at times a little bit overwhelmed by it. What is the biggest category of your collection? You know, it's a toss up. 
if you've seen my declutters, you know how many eyeshadow palettes and single eyeshadows I have, but I'll be honest, I think I've got more lip products. I do, I think I've got more lip products between the minis, the lip glosses, the lipsticks, the liquid lipsticks, the lip liners that I don't even use. I don't even use. So I would say that that is the largest part of my collection are my lip products. But again, I really like most of them. So what are you gonna do? The smallest category of your collection for me is brow products. I have no brows. I was in high school and college in the late 90s and early 2000s. And at that point in time, really thin, thin brows were in trend and I plucked my brows within an inch of their lives for so long that they don't grow back. That's a thing. Be careful. The bushy brows were in for the past few years. I can't even come close. So I don't have a lot of products for that because I don't know how to do my brows and I'm kind of intimidated by it to be honest with you. So I, I do have a few brow products, probably more than I should since I don't use them, but I would say that's the smallest part of my collection. So question number nine, do you have a holy grail in your collection? And I do. And it's not, I mean, it's a makeup product, but it might also be classified as a skincare product. And that is my Laneige sleeping mask. That, I am not exaggerating when I say that has saved my lips. For real, that has saved my lips. I have very dry skin all over my body and my lips included. I also do not drink enough water. That is just a fact of my life. So I, my lips would get very chapped and they would peel and split. And unfortunately, I also have within my personality that I mess with things. So for instance, zits. I mess with them, even though I know that I shouldn't because I scar very easily. Sunburns, which I also get very easily, I will pick at and peel. Like I am just that person. I know it's gross, but I just, I can't help it. My lips were the same way and they would start to peel and I would feel that flake of skin and I would try to take it off. And more often than not, it would cause more harm than good. And when I started using that Laneige sleeping mask, it healed my lips. I am not kidding and I'm not exaggerating, but it really and truly did. And I will never be without that product. I use it every single night and I love it. If you have a similar sort of situation and you haven't tried it, I would totally recommend trying it because it's amazing. It's amazing. All right, so question number 10. Do you ever wish that your collection was bigger or smaller or is it complete? It's kind of an odd question because I don't think that my makeup collection could ever be complete. There are new innovations that come out. There are new trends that come out. Although everything, yes, is cyclic, um, things also expire. So I, I don't think I could ever classify my collection as being complete. Now, the question about whether it, it, whether I wish it was bigger or smaller, yeah, sometimes I do wish that it was smaller, but even then when I declutter, I have a hard time getting rid of it because again, I like it. So I wish that I was better at using through things more consistently so that my collection could be smaller, I guess is the best way and most truthful way to answer that question. How often do you declutter your collection? Not often. The declutter series that I have up so far is genuinely the first time that I have sat down and tried to declutter my collection. And it in some ways has been good and in some ways it has not been what many would classify as successful. What I will say is that it reminded me of some of the things that have been pushed to the backs of drawers that I maybe have forgotten about or haven't used in a while. So in that regard, I feel like it's been successful, but as far as actually like downsizing my collection, it hasn't been crazy successful, but I think it's a valuable exercise. So it is something that I'll probably do a little bit more often, but I haven't done a ton of previously. All right, so question 12, do you ever get envious seeing other people's makeup collections? And honestly, no, I don't. Um, I will say sometimes I do find myself envious of 
a certain product that people have that maybe I missed out on. A great, cl uh, a great example of that rather is the Tarte's Make Believe in Yourself palette. Every time I see that palette or when I've seen somebody's eye look and I've gone down to the description bar and that's what they're wearing, I hate that I missed out on that. Although, side note, I did actually see it on Hot Look and I bought it immediately. But that's just the first example that comes to mind. There have been things in other people's collections, individual products that I'm like, man, I wish that I had purchased that or I wish that I had had the opportunity for that. But as far as their collections as a whole, no, not really, not really. Question 13, who on YouTube has the best makeup collection video? That's hard to say because I watch a wide range of YouTube content creators from people that um, have tons and tons and tons of subscribers to very, very small channels because I've got personalities across the spectrum that I like and that I find value in. And honestly, especially because I am a much smaller channel, I really like interacting with smaller YouTubers so that we can all kind of work together to help bring each other up. And I think that that is my favorite thing about YouTube is that, you know, fostering sense of community there. But as far as the best makeup collection video, I'm not sure. I would say I think the person that I think has the best makeup collection, just the collection, would be Samantha Ravindel. I love her sense of curation in her collection. She went through hmm, probably maybe a year ago and talked about some of her favorite things in her collection and did some really rampant decluttering. And I just, I really love everything that she has in her collection because it's so quintessentially her. I don't think it's quintessentially me by any means. She has a love of cream products, which I truly don't understand. I don't really feel comfortable using cream products, but for her, they're perfect. And I think that that's what I really and truly appreciate about her collection is that it's unique and interesting, but it's also so very, very Sam. And I really like that. So the last question, what's some advice you'd give to a future makeup collector? And that's hard. That's hard. I would say I would say look for the unique. I'm guilty of having so many repeat items and part of it is because if I'm having a bad day, I'll buy makeup because I enjoy shopping for it and I enjoy buying it and I enjoy using it and it makes me happy to do. But when I do that, I end up with a dozen lip products that look exactly like the one that I'm wearing today and I don't have as many unique pieces to my collection and that's something that I'm trying really hard to help instill in myself is looking for that unique. I feel like that is something that is important but I also think that it's something that takes planning. Like I said in that first question, I never set out to become a makeup collector. I just sort of realized one day that I had a makeup collection and so that's kind of a byproduct of that. But I'm making more of a point of looking for that unique now. And so that's that's the advice that I would give to an aspiring makeup collector is find what it is that makes you happy and that you enjoy having and buying and looking at and using. But additionally, find the unique and really make sure that when you are buying things that they are an asset to your collection and not just a repeat. Awesome, so I really enjoyed doing that. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. I really appreciate all the time that you have spent with me and I hope that you are having a really, really fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.